Yes, the intro was longer than usual, but it was cool, wasn't it? So it's been about two months now since both Law and Grimjaw were released to Jump Force, and we got the announcement that we were going to get more DLC in 2020. But we've got no other announcements since then, and one announcement people have been waiting to hear is what series will be getting more characters in the new DLC. And one series people happen to be asking for is Hunter x Hunter, mainly to do with the fact that most Hunter x Hunter fans were disappointed in the DLC character they chose for DLC Pack 1. Yes, I'm talking about Bisky, the character no one asked for. But today we will go over the top 5 best choices for Jump Force DLC from Hunter x Hunter. And yes, I pronounce the X, this is my second favorite anime of all time, so I have the right to say the X. So if you want to fight me, fight me. Alright, at number 5 we've got Kite, who was a mentor figure for Gon and Killua during the Chimera Ant arc, the longest arc ever. Kite was a close friend to Gon's dad and if you watch the anime or read the manga, you know some crazy stuff goes down with this character but I don't plan on spoiling that. But Kite's Nen abilities are pretty unique since his power basically shuffles between a bunch of weapons at random so he never knows exactly what weapon he's going to be using. This could be anywhere from a sword or scythe to different types of guns. So that would be pretty interesting to implement to this game, or it could be pretty annoying. For the fourth spot, we've got Krolo. Throughout the series, there's this gang of villains known as the Phantom Troop who are all cool as hell, but the leader of them all is Krolo, who is so powerful, Hisuka spent a good portion of the series working on a plan to be able to fight him because we all know Hisuka gets horny as hell off strong fighters. Krolo has a specialist nan type, which means when it comes to enhanced strength, he is in the weakest class, but somehow that didn't stop him from becoming incredibly strong and making that fact irrelevant. He's a master of hand-to-hand -hand combat, has enhanced agility and reflexes, and can run on the sides of buildings. He can also steal abilities from others, which makes the person he stole it from unable to use that ability. Some other of his nan abilities are summoning a super long giant fish which consumes human flesh once he even summoned two of them. He can also summon a cloth which can grow and whatever it covers will shrink until it fits in the palm of his hand. He can also teleport people and see future events. There's there's like a thousand other abilities he can do, but that would take forever to get through, so let's just say making a moveset for Krolo wouldn't be hard at all. At number 3 we've got P2, she's basically the second biggest threat in the Chimera Ant arc and brought us that crazy fight between her and Gon. She basically has super everything, super sight, super hearing, super smell, super strength, speed, agility, reflexes, stamina, intelligence, and anything else you can think of. She was born so strong that she was able to use Nan only a few hours of being born. Her signature move is called Dr. Blythe, where a giant doll looking creature is summoned and heals whoever she wants, even herself. She can also attach threads of Nen to people, allowing her to control their every move. At number 2 we've got Netero. Netero is basically the most powerful hunter of the series and the president of the hunter association. Like P2 he also pretty much has enhanced everything. He is also one of the greatest martial artists in the world. Netero even though he is an enhancer type, he is able to control several other Nen types while most people usually are stuck in one category of Nen. His most powerful ability is where he summons a gigantic statue made of Nen, which has many super long arms. Netero is so fast he is able to make the statue strike opponents hundreds of times in less than one second. The statue having so many arms made it possible for Netero to do basically an infinite amount of combinations on his opponent and made the most powerful character of the series, the King of the Chimera Ants, feel fear for the first time. Speaking of the King of the Chimera Ants, at number 1 we've got Miriam. Miriam was basically born with godlike power where most living things stood no chance of hurting him and he was able to kill literally anyone with ease. He even decided to leave his own mother's womb early before he was supposed to be born because he already believed he was powerful enough. Besides also having super everything like the last two, well he actually has super super everything because he's way stronger, 
Miriam also has high pain tolerance since he even ripped off his own arm once and was totally fine, and he also is super resistant to poisons. He was born so smart that he can master pretty much anything with ease and can master Nen abilities without instructions. He can also achieve metamorphosis where he grows wings and is able to fly at super high speeds. However, he has to eat other Nen users to do something like this. He can also do energy blasts like in Dragon Ball Z and shoot microscopic photon blasts. So Miriam vs Cell is a fight to see in Jump Force. So there you have it, the top 5 best Hunter x Hunter characters for Jump Force DLC. Let me know what you guys think. My name's Konjic, and I'll talk to you in the next video.